In 2012, the protein called CRISPR-Cas9, an enzyme that bacteria use to attack viruses that infect them, was unknown to humans. Now it's an ubiquitous in science labs as the most efficient way of cutting and pasting DNA. In a breathless cover story uh, just called The Genesis Engine, covered by Wired magazine, instructing readers to buckle up because the easy DNA editing CRISPR enables will change the world. Now at least one CRISPR focused company has the cash to back up that type. The investment of 120 million from Bill Gates and 30 other investors poured into a revolutionary gene editing startup company uh, as well as Editas and Gates confirmed that Microsoft billionaire who is the world's richest man is among the BNGO backers of this company. This week, October the 7th, 2020, two female CRISPR scientists make history by becoming the first pair of women to win the Nobel Peace Prize in chemistry for the gene editing invention CRISPR. The award from the person who invented stuff that was used to blow up stuff was all which is always held at the Royal Swedish Institute of Science was awarded to American biochemist Jennifer Doudna of the University of California, Berkeley, and French microbiologist Emmanuel Charpentier of the Max Planck Institute for Infectious Biology for their 2012 discovery that a bacterial immune system called CRISPR can be used to edit DNA using programs such as CRISPR-9. But a number of reports um, out there have suggested that CRISPR gene editing can cause hundreds of unintended mutations and problems down the line which hasn't been addressed. If you could get a tiny injection that could prevent your child from getting cancer, would you do it? Okay, what about whilst you're at it, you could also choose their eye colour or their height or their skin tone. Where would you draw the line? We might be several decades away from making those types of decisions, but the technology that would allow us to edit DNA, that's already here. It's called CRISPR. Every living thing is composed of its DNA. So CRISPR could be used to control what genes get expressed or delete undesirable traits in any plant, animal, or human. Okay, here's how it works. Scientists have learned how to engineer a protein that can cut out specific sequences of code out of DNA strands. The protein is called Cas9. It uses a strand of RNA code to tell it exactly what to snip. The code is like a mugshot. Only an exact match with the DNA sequence will do. Then, scientists add in replacement code and... Ta-da! You've edited a genome. It is cheap, quick and easy. Seriously, right? If you've got access to a lab, it costs just $75, takes a few hours and a high schooler can do it. It's already been used to reduce genetic deafness in mice, make mushrooms that don't brown easily, and scientists are even trying to make mosquitoes that can't give you malaria. It could potentially be used to bring back extinct species like the passenger pigeon or the woolly mammoth. And that's not all. CRISPR is also being used in human clinical trials, particularly to treat things like blood diseases, HIV, and even cancer. Scientists in China made headlines in 2018 when they claimed to have edited the DNA of three human embryos to be HIV resistant. And while this broke through new barriers, the public backlash was swift and fierce. And three Chinese scientists, they were sent to prison. Many of CRISPR's creators have called for a moratorium on editing sperm, eggs and embryos. Their concern is that we're on a slippery ethical slope. Editing the genome code of someone alters their DNA, but that change dies with them. This is called somatic gene editing, 
Editing the genome code of a sperm cell, egg or embryo is called germline gene editing and it means that the change will pass on to all of the affected person's offspring and their offspring's offspring and so on. This could have tremendous benefits. It could quickly and cheaply wipe out devastating hereditary diseases, but it also raises some serious ethical questions. For one, future generations can't consent to having their genes altered. And then what happens if and when gene editing technology goes beyond simply tackling diseases? For instance, Studies show that attractive people tend to earn more money. Surely some parents would want to pick and choose the genetic attributes that would give their children a leg up in life. This kind of editing is called genetic enhancement. And the line between gene enhancement and curing diseases can get really murky really fast. This kind of elective procedure, it's only going to be accessible to the people that can afford it. And that that could deepen social, economic, even racial divisions. Now, let's zoom out even further. We have no idea what kind of long-term impact these genetic fixes could have down the line. Gene editing isn't 100% accurate. Any mistakes made now will affect many generations to come. Some crispered cells can initiate tumours or trigger cancer and parents do not want to pass those traits down to their kids. But right now, doctors are already performing prenatal screenings to ensure the health of an embryo for in vitro fertilisation. So, what are we going to screen for in the future? Gene editing technology is on the cusp of drastically affecting humanity. It brings great promise in the form of reducing or eliminating many diseases. On the flip side, it could also shrink the human gene pool, widen socioeconomic divisions and have exponential consequences for future generations. Gene editing technology hasn't reached that level yet, which is why now is the time to collectively decide what we should do.